Hey everyone, today I wanted to share a Minecraft data pack that I made that allows you to play Call of Duty on any map of your choosing, not just the Nuketown map that you see behind me, but any map that you happen to download. In this video, I want to go over everything you need to know in order to set up the data pack properly and how to use it to play Call of Duty Minecraft. So I'm going to break up this video into sections. First, I'm going to go over how to start a game on an already downloaded map like this one. And then I'm going to go over how to set up the data pack and play Call of Duty on any Minecraft map of your choosing. And lastly, I'm going to go over the basic mechanics of the game, including all the different game modes, how to use all the guns and equipment, and also how to use the killstreaks. But before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to several people. David Mason on Planet Minecraft, who designed the landscaping for this new town map. Every Lemming, who designed the landscaping for the hijacked map, and Cloud Wolf, whose videos I've learned a lot from while putting together my own data pack. Now I want to go over how you can start a game on a map that already has the data pack properly installed and set up. So you should spawn in a room like this, and you're going to first select the game mode you want to play. In this case, I'm going to go with Team Deathmatch and select a team. And then next, you're going to spawn in a room like this where you can choose what guns you like by clicking through these books. And then once you've selected which guns you like and which equipment you like, you're going to press lock and loadout and you'll be transported to the main hub. In here, you can swap your teams, decrease or increase the score limit, change your class by pressing this button, manipulate the time limit of the game, turn on and off kill streak, and select your own kill streaks through this booklet here. And then you can also change the game options. So once everyone in your party is ready, you can press start game. If you are playing a respawn game mode, when you die, you will respawn back in this main hub where you can change your class again. And you're going to respawn back on the map by standing on this sea lantern right here. When the game ends, everyone will be teleported back to the hub where you can change settings, weapon classes, teams, and play the same game mode. If you'd like to change the game mode that you're playing, all you need to do is press reset map and you can restart the process with a different game mode. Lastly, if anything goes wrong, then you can always use the slash kill command to return to the main hub and then you can press the reset map button to reset the process. Before we move on to how to set up the data pack, I wanted to mention that it is highly recommended that you play with the accompanying resource pack. Otherwise, every gun will just look like a carrot on the stick and you won't know when you can fire and when you're actually reloading. I've only created enough custom model data for guns to help players distinguish between the main types of weapons. If anyone else is interested in creating the rest of the 3D models, you are welcome to do so and I'd be happy to add it later on to the rest of the data pack. So now I'm going to show you how you can install and set up the data pack to play Call of Duty on any map of your choosing. So this is just a Black Ops 2 hijack map without the data pack currently installed. And I've just placed these yellow and blue wool blocks to represent where we are going to be placing the markers that we will need to eventually run the game. But first we're going to need to place the data pack into the world folder. So the first thing we need to do is actually access our .minecraft folder. And I found that the easiest way to do this is by going to your options menu in game, the resource packs tab and pressing open pack folder. This should bring you to your resource packs folder. And next you're going to want to download the .zip file in the description below that contains all the necessary data pack files. Once you have that downloaded, you're going to want to extract it using whatever program that you usually use. And then once it's complete, you're going to want to first place the Call of Duty resource pack folder into the resource pack folder in your .minecraft folder. Next, you're going to navigate to your .minecraft folder and then to your saves folder and finally to your world folder that you want to play Call of Duty on. And you're going to place the generated folder directly into this worlds folder. And then from here, you're going to go to your data packs folder within your world folder and then place the Call of Duty data pack folder just like this. Now the data pack should be properly installed and ready to go on the world. So you can go ahead and navigate back to your Minecraft launcher. You should see a new Call of Duty resource pack available to play on and you should go ahead and select it. 
From here, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is go into your chat and type the slash reload command. This will basically establish and initiate the data pack so that everything is ready to go and you can begin the marker setup process. The marker setup process is basically where you are setting up where each of the individual map landmarks are. For example, where the blue team will spawn at the beginning of the game, where the different hardpoint sites are, and where the different domination flags, etc. So it's really important that you get this done properly and follow the instructions very carefully to ensure that everything runs smoothly and there are no bugs and glitches. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to navigate to the north side of the map and then type the following command into the chat. So I'm just going to click on the command once to copy it to my clipboard and then I'm just going to open my chat and paste the command there. So you should now see that the main hub has spawned in front of you and now you want to go to where you want the red team to spawn in when you start the game and then click this text to place a marker there. I've already decided upon where I want to place the red team spawn but for your own map you're going to have to decide that for yourself. And just a quick note, when you place the markers, you don't have to be exactly aligned to the center of the block, but you just need to be on the right coordinates and the data pack command should automatically align it for you. So in this case, I'm going to stand here and I'm just going to click the following text. And now I'm going to want to go to the blue team spawn site. I will be including this already set up hijacked map in the description for you guys to try out as well, but just keep in mind you can do this on any map that you'd like and I'm going to click this text to place a blue team spawn. Also, as you may have noticed, for your convenience, if you make a mistake on the last marker, you can always click the yellow text here to delete the last marker and replace it. So for example, if I had accidentally placed the blue team spawn right here, I can just go ahead and click the yellow text here and I can replace the blue team spawn. However, you can only go back to the last marker that you placed so from here, I won't be able to replace the red team spawn site, for example. But for now, I'm going to replace the blue team spawn in the proper location and then move on to the spectator spawn. That is going to be basically where I want the spectators to first spawn in on the map. And to give them a good view of the map, I'll just place it right up here. From here, you're going to be asked to divide the map into three sections, the middle map section, the red team map section, and the blue team map section. So first, starting with the middle map section, you're going to want to go to the lowest XYZ coordinate and click on this text to place a marker. What that means in more verbose terms is you're going to look for where the X y and z coordinate are at their lowest which means the least positive or the most negative and in this case that would be right here and keep in mind that xyz includes the y axis so because hijack also includes this underground region over here i'm going to go to this boundary here and place a marker right here next we're going to go to the highest xyz boundary of the middle map section so that's just the opposite corner. And basically the boundaries is just gonna be a cube. So I'm gonna go all the way to this block and place a marker right here. So next I'm going to go to the red team side of the map. So when it says the lowest XYZ coordinate, that again means the least positive or the most negative. And in my case, since this is the edge of the map, I'm going to place a marker right here. Next, as before, I'm going to go to the highest XYZ coordinate of the red team side. Also, just a note, the red side, the middle map section, and the blue team side should be touching but not be overlapping. So for example, the red team side ends on this block, and then the middle map section will start immediately to the right of this block. So next, I'm being asked to place the lowest XYZ coordinate of the blue team side. So I'm going to go over to the this side over here. Next, I'm going to be placing the highest XYZ coordinates right over here. The last thing you need to do for the map sections is to place where the center of the map is. So I'm just going to navigate to the center of the map and place this marker just like that. Now you're going to be placing where you want the respawn points to be on the map. So you're going to be placing six red team markers, six blue side markers, 
and six middle map markers. So I've already previously marked out where I want the respawn sites to be, but as I mentioned before, you're gonna have to decide for yourself where you want the respawn sites to be specifically. So that's two, three, that's four, that's five, and that's six. So now I'm going to be doing the blue team side in the same fashion as before. Okay, now we're gonna place where the middle map respawn sites will be. Now we're going to be placing where the domination flags will be. The A site will be over here. So that's the A flag, that's the B flag, and that's the C flag. Now we're gonna be placing where we want the capture the flag flags to be. Okay, now we've moved on to place the markers for the hardpoint game mode. So basically this is asking me to set the boundaries of where each of the four hardpoints should be. So I'm gonna to go to the lowest XYZ coordinate of the first hardpoint site. And remember, just keep in mind that as before, when we were placing the different map sections, the lowest XYZ coordinate includes the X, Y, and Z axis. And the higher boundary is gonna be over here. Next, it asks to place where the center of the hard point is. It doesn't have to be exactly center, but it's basically just where you want the title or the label for the hard point side to be once you play the game. Okay, next we're going to place the XYZ coordinates of the second hard point site, which is actually going to be in this room. And sometimes that means the lowest coordinate is in the walls because the boundaries can only be a cube and the highest point is actually over here. The name marker for the site, I'll just put it maybe right over here. Okay, next, we're gonna repeat the same process for the third hardpoint site. And when you're playing the hardpoint game mode, keep in mind that order does matter. So in the actual Black Ops game, the hardpoint sites will rotate. So it'll first go to the first site, then the second site, then the third site, then the fourth site, then back to the first site. So now I'm going to place the lowest marker and then the highest marker is actually again in this wall. The center point, I'll just place it right over here. And now we're going to do the last hard point site, which is going to be in this room right over here. So the lowest point is again in the wall. And the highest point is in the other wall. And lastly, we're just going to place where we want the label to be. And maybe this is probably a decent spot to place it. Now, moving on to the headquarters game mode, we need to place where the five different headquarters will be located on the map. So first we need to go to the first headquarters site. When you play the headquarters game mode, you'll see that the headquarters will basically spawn as two dried kelp blocks next to each other. So the lowest XYZ coordinate is going to be this one and the highest XYZ coordinate is going to be this one. Next, we're going to repeat the same process for the second headquarter site. And then I'm going to go ahead and speed up this process, but I'm going to place the third, fourth, and fifth headquarter sites in the same fashion as before. Now we're almost done. We just need to place the search and destroy markers. So first we're going to place the A-bomb site. It's basically going to be in a similar or analogous fashion to the headquarter sites. Then I'm going to do the same thing for bomb site B. And lastly, we just need to place where we want the bomb to spawn on the red team side, right over here. So once you place where the search and destroy bomb pickup site is, you've now successfully completed the marker setup process. But if at any point you realize later on that a mistake was made, you can type the following command into chat and it will delete all the markers that you've placed, and then you can restart the entire marker setup process from the beginning. But if everything was placed properly, then you are good to go to just press the reset map button, and then you can just choose a game mode and start playing the game. For the rest of this video, I want to go over all the different game mechanics, starting with the different game modes. 
So first we have Team Deathmatch and Free For All. These are pretty self-explanatory. It's just trying to kill the other team or other players. Next we have Kill Confirmed. This is pretty much just Team Deathmatch, but instead when players die, they drop dog tags. You earn points for your team by picking up enemy dog tags, and you deny enemy team points by picking up your own team's dog tags. Next we have Domination, where there will be three flags on the map that you can capture by standing near them for a period of time. Then every five seconds, the game will check to see how many flags each team has and award one point to each team based on how many flags they hold. Next we have Capture the Flag, where you earn points by stealing the enemy flag from their base and bringing it back to your own base. Next is Hardpoint, where different regions of the map will rotate as being deemed the hardpoint and your team can earn points by having someone on your team stand on the site to accrue points. Next is Headquarters, where two teams will try to capture the headquarters by standing near it for a period of time. After the headquarters have been captured, the defending team will accrue points based on how long they can hold on to the headquarters, but they will not be able to respawn. The attacking team, on the other hand, will continue to respawn and their goal is to capture the headquarters in order to reset the process and have the quarters spawn at a new location. The last standard game mode is called Search and Destroy, where all players only have one life. The red team are the attackers and their goal is to either kill all the enemy blue team players or try to plant the bomb by holding onto the tripwire hook for a period of time near one of the two bomb sites. The blue team are the defenders and their goal is to either stop the red team from planting the bomb in the first place or defuse the bomb after it has already been planted. To wrap up the rest of the game modes, we have the four different party games, the first of which is gun game. All players start with the same initial pistol, but when players get kills, they get promoted and receive a new gun. The first player to cycle through each of the 20 different guns and get a kill with each of them wins the game. Next is one of the chamber where players have three lives but only have a M1911 pistol with only one bullet that can kill players in one shot. Whenever a player gets a kill, then they will receive a bullet back, and the last person standing wins the game. Next is Six and Stones where players try to accrue as many points as they can in a certain amount of time. Crossbow and ballistic knife kills will earn the player 100 points and melee kills will earn the player 25 points. Tomahawk kills, on the other hand, will only earn the player 10 points, but will also reset the killed player score back to zero. The last game mode is called Sharpshooter, where players try and earn as many points as they can over a set number of time limit rounds with randomly generated guns. 100 points are awarded for every gun kill, 25 points are awarded for every melee kill, and players are also rewarded with certain perks for getting consecutive kills without dying. For this next section, I want to go over how the guns work. To shoot, you can press right click. If you have an automatic weapon, you can hold down right click. And for semi-automatic weapons, you click repeatedly to shoot. Most of the guns in this game are hit scan, but there are a few exceptions. Launchers, for example, have travel time, and the crossbow and ballistic knife have both travel time as well as an arced trajectory. Most of the guns also have damage drop off based on range, and they also have a limited ability to penetrate through walls. You can reload your gun by swapping the gun to your offhand, but keep in mind that you can't reload while sprinting, for example, and you also can't shoot while sprinting, just like in the real game. When you die, if you were holding a gun in your hand, you will actually drop the gun on the ground, and later on, if you or if someone else come across it again, you can actually press Q to drop the current gun in your hand and swap it out. Lastly, before we move off the topic of guns, I want to go over how the sniper rifles and ballistic knife work. For the sniper, you're going to scope in by holding down right click, and your shot is going to trigger when you let go just like that. For the ballistic knife, when you shoot it, you'll actually drop a knife on the ground that you can pick up by walking near it in order to restock your ammo. Next, I want to talk about the different equipment in the game. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory, you just press right click to throw them, but I'm going to quickly go over the frag, tomahawk, d4, and the tactical insertion because they have a little bit of their own quirks. First, for the frag grenade, you can actually cook it if you just hold on to right click before you throw it. But as you can see, if you cook it for too long, then it'll actually just explode in your hand. So just time it and it'll explode based on how long you cook it for. 
Next is the tomahawk. You throw it normally just by pressing right click, but as you can see, it'll actually drop a tomahawk on the ground like with the ballistic knife. Next is C4. You throw it by pressing right click, and as you can see, once you throw one of them on the ground, you actually get the C4 detonator as well, which you can use to blow up any C4 that you have already thrown. Lastly is tactical insertion, which you can use by just pressing right click normally, and then once you die, you actually see that you now have a cancel TI spawn, which means that if you decide that you don't actually want to respawn on your tactical insertion spot, you can click on the book and it'll actually spawn you elsewhere. So finally, before I wrap up this very long video, I want to briefly cover the different killstreaks in the game. The spy plane reveals players on the enemy team by giving them glowing outlines. The care package will summon a random reward, which will appear in the air above you. It will either be one of the other streaks, the Death Machine or Grim Reaper. The Napalm Strike will summon a line of fiery napalm that will burn any enemies that try to walk through it or cross it. To specifically aim the napalm strike, you're first going to target where you want the napalm strike to start, and then you're going to aim the napalm director towards which direction you want the napalm strike to go in. Moving on to the sentry gun, this kill streak allows you to summon an army of skeletons that shoots any nearby enemies in its region. Next, the mortar team kill streak teleports you into the air to target three different locations to drop bombs all around the map. The 7 kill streak is an attack helicopter that allows you to target a specific location for an aerial fleet of skeletons to patrol and hunt down and shoot down any enemies in the nearby region. The 8 kill streak Blackbird is basically an upgraded version of the spy plane that provides a constant glowing outline to all enemies so that you always know where they may be lurking. The second option for an 8 kill streak is the Rolling Thunder which allows you to target a massive sweeping airstrike throughout the map in a similar fashion to the napalm strike that kills all enemies in a very large region. And lastly, the 11 kill streak allows you to summon an army of attack dogs throughout the map that relentlessly hunt down and kill nearby enemies in the region. So that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to talk about. If you made it this far into the video, thanks for sticking around to the end. This project has been over three years in the making and I'm really happy to be able to finally release it for public use. So if you end up trying it out, I would love to hear your thoughts, suggestions, or areas for improvement. Also, if people are interested in a tutorial on how I program the map, let me know and I can always make a walkthrough video explaining the process. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Hope you like the map and thanks for watching.